Now this over here is one of the best AIOs in the world. This is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 420mm. Yes, these three are 140mm fans, but there's a new guy that's arrived. This is the brand new 360mm AIO from EK and this is the new guy to beat. I tend to put this on a test and find out if you really can get 420 millimeter performance out of a 360 millimeter AIO. Well, let's find out. This video is sponsored by MSI and their RTX 4070 Ti Gaming X. It's one of the best GPUs for a creator to speed up their workflow. 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X video memory, dual encoders for up to double the encoding speed compared to the GeForce 30 series, efficient four nanometer process and silent operation, third generation ray tracing cores, AV1 encoding, and much more. With the help of MSI's Torx Fan 5.0 and thermal design, you can be sure of solid performance even after hours of use and it's also one of the most affordable rtx 4070 ti models out there so check it out in the video description below if you want to pick up these aios i'm going to leave them linked in the description below now what better cpu to test this than the 13900k 24 cores 32 threads pulls absolutely loads of power and it runs very hot. So we're gonna see how these two can tame it. I've got the XDU open here and we're gonna do a few changes. This 100%, so power boost 100%. This unlimited as well. So basically now the PL1 and PL2 limits are just absolutely maximum, which means that the multi-core enhancement is turned on from the BIOS by default from ASUS. So multi-core enhancement is on. Okay, nothing else is on at the moment. We can see PL2 and PL1 limit, unlimited power. Um, it idles very low, nine watts there, 9.5 watts, okay. So let's see how good is it. Single test, nothing else is running than just this, go. 5.5 instantly thermal throttles. That was weird. It only pulled 257 watts as well. And we got 36,000 points. Let's try this again. 263 instantly 100 degrees and four cores thermal throttle. And we're only pulling five gigahertz. I'm gonna have to double check the application and the mounting brackets if everything is correct because I know this shouldn't happen because I'm running this cooler in my personal rig or the editing rig and we're pulling much more wattage and we're able to like keep it under control because this is a bit weird. Okay, I've checked everything. This is the LJ1700 kit. It's, it's, it's odd. Let's try this again, okay? I'm gonna go start and then now this side. 289 watts, 314, as you can see, a little bit more, but we're still instantly thermal throttling. And our cores are clocked at 5.4, 5.3 gigahertz. So interestingly, we still got a very good score, like 39,823 is, is quite high, but you can see that the clock speeds, they should all be kind of holding at 5.5 gigahertz. So if we're gonna do that again, thermal throttling in three, two, it's about three seconds in thermal throttles there. But it does pull a bit more, 327 watts, something like that. Some of the peak cores can go 5.5 holding there and then goes 5.4. Look at that, we got 40,000 points here now. Even better at that. Let's put this for 10 minutes and let's see what happens. This is like the fanciest 360 millimeter AIO I've seen. It's got these really fancy, uh, brushed kind of black side panels and then EK around nice kind of smart around the tubes are very very bendy the block is a little bit different this area the copper area is much bigger than Arctic's copper area we can see thermal paste already applied so we're going to test how good that one is there is a nice block that's going to RGB light up and you can rotate it around whichever way you want. And when opening the box, this is one of the nicest welcome things you, you're going to see. There's, uh, you know, literature for you. And everything's lined up really, really nicely here, including all the accessories and things. It says this side up. Look at this little orange box. 
you pull it out and then everything is lined up there like that nicely beautifully all the screws all the everything this is just it's absolutely beautiful i'm gonna figure out the 1700 mounting kit and then we're gonna put that one on there now So we have last five seconds left now and we're still pulling about 317 watts not quite 330 right our clock speeds are 5.4 gigahertz and 4.3 on the e cores and we are thermal throttling on just pretty much the 3p cores i mean it was a little bit hot and to be honest i think there's more performance out there i tightened those screws on the standoffs that go between the, the motherboard and the cooler bracket those standoffs i screw them in as hard as i can so that there's no like leftover length there so that the cooler bracket right now it sits on top of there so maybe if we got even more pressure on the cooler like pulling them down we might be getting even better thermals there because i know i'm running exactly the same cooler in my editing pc and the thermals are a little bit better but it could depend on like the coolant the orientation the flow but what I do want to know is how good is this EK cooler? Let's get it changed and check it out. Alrighty, the new EK 360mm AIO has been set up. There is RGB fans, they're just on the other side, as you can see here. But one thing I do have noticed straight away is that the pump is a little bit louder. Now, I'm not sure if this is meant to be like that, if this is just my unit, or just listen to this. Can you hear that? But that's not the most important thing. There is 21.6 degrees in this room right now and let's see how does it do let's see if we're gonna thermal throttle first load whoa oh my goodness we were pulling 323 watts and look at that look at the points we got 1300 more points than with the previous cooler. And if we look at the core temperatures, obviously all the cores here went 5.5 gigahertz and 5.4.3 uh, on the E cores. The max we saw on a P core was 97 degrees. Okay, so there was a this core five. A no thermal throttling on a single run. Okay, this makes me super excited. I mean, 325 watts that's absolutely ridiculous 40,428 so here's what we're gonna do 10 minutes go and zero see it goes back down to 95 97 and then pops down to 95 i am using the included thermal paste and we throttle there a little bit core 5 was thermal throttling let's have a look 98 so that one probably thermal throttles when we hit 98 but look at that all cores 5.5 gigahertz it's not blinking at all 331 watts 328 that is absolute craziness okay now and then third row we are 100 degrees something like that so there's two minutes and 40 seconds left and we can see the P core 5 and 7 are the hot ones. The temperature in the room is now 23.1 degrees there. It's a little bit warmer. But the interesting thing is we're still pulling 323 watts from the socket, which is just insane, insane temperature. Now we have reached 102 degrees there. And after eight minutes of absolute full-on load our clock speeds are 5.5 and some of them are dropping to 5.4 so it's keeping the clock speeds very very well as you can see e-core clock speeds not a problem at all they are not hot if you look here they are just in the 70s 80s there all the e-cores max e-core was like 86 there i think peaked at some point yeah just two of the p-cores have thermal throttled a little bit We'll see what the score is right now. It looks like, ooh, we are gonna get over 40,000 points still after 10 minutes. If that is true, that's insane. Let's see if this is, if this is gonna happen. Alrighty, look at 
that. 40,000 points. This is ridiculous, ridiculous performance. As you can see previously, we, we didn't hit the 40,000 mark. So basically this EK cooler is able to take those bursts, very high load and soak the heat out much better than on the Arctic liquid freezer. Obviously the uh, copper block on it is much bigger as well. Now another thing I noticed is that we're getting pretty much exactly a thousand points higher score. And you're thinking, Okay, what is that? Like a thousand points? It's not that, that big of a deal. It's about 2.4% higher score that we got. But interesting thing is, I noticed that we did about four, 32 or something like that passes in the 10 minutes, right? And every time we're getting about thousand points higher score, which means that with this EK cooler, we're almost able to do one more whole rendering cycle of this or scene compared to the arctic liquid freezer because after 31 we're like 32 points ahead of the total score if that makes sense so almost one extra run over there but now this has been heated up now it's kind of cooled down but the woo these vrm heat sinks are still very very warm but if we're going to do an extra test now okay let's see if we're thermal throttling now just a single test yep we did thermal throttle there look at that we're still getting 40,456 points that is almost 1500 points higher there or 1400 points higher that's ridiculous ridiculous score so if we're looking at side by side these um, kind of results we can see that we measured pretty much exactly within three seconds so there's 10 minutes and 22 seconds there and then 10 minutes and 19 seconds on the liquid freezer too there. So we've talked about the points difference already, uh, which we couldn't even reach 40,000 points with um, the liquid freezer. But looking at the clock speeds, the average clock speeds for the liquid freezer too was about 5.5 in there on all of them. But as you can see, the average on Liquid Freezer 2 was 4.652 gigahertz on all of the cores. Whereas on the EK Nucleus, we're getting 4,677 megahertz average clock speed, which is a bit higher. Each one of the cores has gone much higher than on the Liquid Freezer 2, especially if you look at the P cores, the average was 5.45. 5.4 so 50 to 70 kind of uh, megahertz higher on each of the p cores now this is average right and a huge load on those cores in terms of e cores the e cores aren't that different they look very similar some of the cores as you can see here are actually a little bit higher as well we're able to clock a bit higher when we're looking at the temperatures, we can see that the EK was one degrees higher at the maximum, right? But then the average was one degrees higher as well, which is interesting. The CPU package though, we were at, on average, able to pull extra 10 watts, roughly, almost, from the socket. The peak was 331 and here was 330. So on average, the EK is pulling a bit more watts or letting it pull a bit more watts there as well. So then what we're saying, what's the conclusion? Do you get similar performance as a 420 millimeter cooler from this EK Nucleus uh, CR360? And the answer is yes, you do. In fact, a little bit better. The 13th gen and 12th gen are slightly different size or shapes kind of CPU IHSs, which means that the kind of, we have to reevaluate all of the coolers. If we put it on the previous 11th gen or AM4, AM5 socket even, then we're getting it a little bit differently um, there. But now the CPUs actually work differently slightly as well. The CPUs are boosting as high clock speeds as possible, as long as you give it thermal headroom. So the more thermal headroom there is, the higher and the longer the clock speeds are gonna go for. And the CPUs just happily run as close to the TJ Maxx as possible. That's AM5, so Ryzen 7000 plus CPUs, and Intel 12th and 13th gen, especially 13th gen, which likes to run very hot. And as you can see, sometimes thermal throttle because it runs so close to the limit there and then says, okay, we'll thermal throttle, pull that a bit and then see how long and how fast we can do that. 
But to me, that's just impressive to get that from a 360 millimeter cooler as what we have here. So this one is probably the one to beat in the market right now. And it looks much nicer than the Arctic as well. Obviously, it depends, um, you know, your design of things and what do you like. But the Arctic has its own kind of look. It's not quite black and it's not as minimalistic. It looks like a Batmobile type of a cooler here. And it's got a little bit of a cooling for your VRM. So if we did VRM tests, then on the Arctic, they're a little bit lower. But on a normal scenario where you're editing or something like that, you'll never run the CPU that hot, I don't think. If you're working on it, you're never gonna see these loads. So this is pushing it absolutely to the you know, synthetically to the maximum. So in reality, even if you have the multi-core enhancement enabled, you're never going to really see 330 watts pulled unless you're just, you know, working on something like that or in some certain scenarios. I did an 8K export of a 50 minute video, something like that from Premiere Pro, and I didn't see more than 250 watts or something like that pulled at peak. And we peaked something like 80, something like two degrees and never saw any thermal throttling on the liquid freezer too which means that on the ek1 we'd get even better performance type of thing but the impressive thing is to get the smaller size cooler like this one here and still beat the 420 millimeter cooler that we have here the one downside is a little bit of a louder fans i do notice that the fans are slightly louder and so is the pump but if they're inside the pc you're not gonna notice that as much. What I really like is the more minimalistic pump head kind of uh, design there. It's more black and it more fits into some of the color themes that you might have. I like the cable management is a little bit more straightforward. All the RGB is a bit longer and then it can be piggy tailed as well to the pump head and all the RGB fans. I just think it's a much nicer cooler and the market lead cooler there. If you want to check this one out, all of the liquid freezer, I'm going to leave both of them in the description below, but definitely worth checking out this one if you can't fit the 420 millimeter in there. Bear in mind the 420 millimeter is much more affordable than this one, but this is a premium cooler. But as you can see, you'll get premium performance as well. But if you do want to build yourself the best bang for buck, create a PC, then check out the build guides in the description below. There's a PC build for you, whatever budget you have, check it out. There's upgrades, downgrades, everything fit for your budget. I know these are the best tutorials on YouTube for creators if you want to build yourself a PC, so go check them out down below. That's it.